Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulullah amma bad Alhamdulillah, walhamdulillah, walhamdulillah Nahnu al-an fi shahrul muharram Wa qad Hastanu nabiyyuna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam An yasum Yani yawm al-ashir Wa yawm al-tasir Yani shahrul muharram um, alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Al-Muharram The month of Al-Muharram And we know from the Sunnah of our Prophet wasallam, He have encouraged us to fast on the 10th And also follow along with the 9th Or if not the 9th, the 10th along with the 11th Allahu A'lam As we should go inshaAllah Ta'ala Shira Thameen, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayk Explains the benefits of fasting on Yomu Ashura. Yomu Ashura. So that you know, uh, we're in the month of Muharram, and tomorrow, Gadin, will be, inshallah ta'ala, the seventh, which will correspond um, <coughs> with the ninth of Al Muharram, and the eighth of August will correspond with the tenth of Al Muharram. And the uh, ninth will correspond with the eleventh of Al Muharram. So in these days, it's recommended. It's not obligatory for an individual to fast. Yani, um, at least two of the days, if not just one day, which is Yom Mutasir. So first and foremost, Al Muharram has a lot of benefits associated with it. One of the months of the month of Al Islam. Uh, from the Shuruh al-Islam The months of Islam So we understand that it is recommended to fast During the month of Al-Muharram Not just Yawm Ashir. Okay It is also recommended It is the month that comes after Dhul Hijjah Which is the end of the Islamic year Okay Dhul Hijjah is the last month Of the 12th month of the Islamic month Okay so it starts a new year In Al-Muharram However we are not encouraged Via by Allah nor the Sunnah To celebrate Al-Muharram Okay so there is no such thing Of giving New Year's resolutions Even when it comes to the Islamic Tradition So he says وهو الذي جعله خليفة راشد أبير المؤمنين أمر بن خطاب رضي عنه أول شهور السنة Right and he said, is that which the Khalifa, the rightly godly successor, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the command of the believers, or the command of the faithful Umar ibn al-Khattab, has made it the first of the first month of the month of the year, meaning the first month of the year. Okay. He says, وَصَوْمُهُ أَفْتَالُ سِيَامُ بَعَدُ رَمَضَانِ Fasting uh, in this month, meaning in Al-Muharram, uh, is better that a person fasting uh, in this month is better than uh, uh, fasting in any month outside of the month of Ramadan. As the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said in the hadith collected by Muslim, Afdalu Suyamu Ba'adu Ramadan Shahrullahu Al Muharram, that the best of fast after uh, the month of Ramadan is the month of Allah, which is Al Muharram. So the best fast you can do in this hadith, the Prophet is stating outside of the month of Ramadan, will be none other than Al-Muharram, all right, which we are in now, okay, which is the first month uh, of the year, okay. We already finished, uh, alhamdulillah, last month was the last month of the year. So the ulama, the scholars, may Allah have mercy upon them, they differ in regards to which one is better. That a person fast on the month of Al-Muharram or that he fast on the month of Sha'ban. Does he fast on the month of Sha'ban? Why do they differ? Because there are texts for both, okay? Some of the ulama, they say that rarely fasting during the month of Sha'ban. And for those who don't know, the month of Sha'ban is the month that precedes the month of Ramadan. The month Sha'ban precedes the month of Ramadan. 
the month the month of Al Muharram comes after Dhul Hijjah. Okay, that's the month we in now. So the scholars they differ in regards to which one is better. Is it better to fast in the month of Sha'ban, or is it better to fast in the month Al Muharram? Okay, uh, and this differing is due to the fact that. Um, some of the scholars they mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ, he used to fast in the month of Sha'aban, illa qalila minhu, except rarely few. So he he would fast majority of the month of Sha'aban. Okay, he would fast the majority of the month of Sha'aban. Walam yahfad anhu anhu kana yasum shahr muharram. Okay, and it's not preserved for him that he would fast a lot or tremendously in the month of Muharram like he would do in the month of Sha'aban. Okay. It's not, it's not reported that he will fast um, frequently as he would do in the month of Sha'ban. Okay? So the scholars who argue, they say that really it is better to fast in the month of Sha'ban outside of the month of Ramadan. Alright? <clears throat> he says, Like in the ala siyamihi bi kolihi, in the after ala siyamah ba'ad Ramadan. However, the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged us to fast during the month of, of Al-Muharram due to his saying, indeed, it is the best fast outside of the month of Ramadan. So they respond, meaning the ulama, وَلِأَنَّ سَوْمُ شَعَبَانِ يَنْزِلُ مَنْزِلَ الرَّاتِبَ قَبْلَ فَرِيدًا وَسَوْمُ مُحَرَّمْ Al-Muharram يَنْزِلُ مَنْزِلَ النَّفَلَ الْمُطْلَقِ So they say that fasting during the month of Sha'aban, it reaches the position of those ratiba. Those things that are done, you know how you see you have the Sunnah Ratiba, those Salats or Salawats that are that follows the obligatory Salawats. They um, say about the fasting of the month of Sha'aban or the fasting in the month of Sha'aban takes the position of the Ratiba before the Faridah, the obligations. And fasting in the month of Al Muharram, fasting in the month of Al Muharram takes the position of a unrestricted. Um, Superrogatory act, all right, and the position of the ratiba is better than the position of an unrestricted act. Since I'm coming from a book of fiqh, that's why I'm speaking in this term, that's why it sounds like this because the terminology is which is used. And don't forget, sometimes it's good to know what type of scholar you are coming from. Sheriff they mean was well versed in multiple sciences throughout the uh Islamic sciences, but he was definitely distinguished as a faqih. Right, someone who definitely was well skilled in fiqh. Okay, so he speaks in this book specifically on the terms of fiqh. So this is why you hear him instructing us like that. He says, at any rate, these two months, meaning what month? The month of Sha'ban and the month of Al Muharram. So you can follow along. These two months, it is still recommended that a person fast within those months. Illa and the Sha'ban la All right. Except the case of Sha'aban that a person doesn't complete it because you can't make it resemble Ramadan. So you can't fast the entire month of Sha'aban because you don't want it to resemble Ramadan. However, you can fast the majority of Sha'aban. And we don't have no reports that the Prophet ﷺ fasted the majority of Muharram other than the fact that the Prophet ﷺ said it is the best uh, fast after the fast outside of Ramadan, which shows us the position of fasting. Tayyip. Now, let's get to the part where the meat and the potatoes of this particular video, since we're talking about Yawm Ashura. So, it is confirmed within the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that the 10th day of Al-Muharram is known as Yawm Ashura, and that the Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to fast fast particularly on this specific day and then he follow it up with the ninth okay then he follow it up with the ninth don't get confused the tenth do not come before the ninth but we should see why the prophet وسلم, and what is meant that he follow it up with the ninth as the shaykh he says here وسلم, he says that here the prophet وسلم, have confirmed for us that fasting during the month of al muharram on the tenth then the ninth meaning that the Prophet ﷺ, he was asked about fasting on the day of Ashura. فقال, the Prophet ﷺ says, He mentioned the Prophet ﷺ said, I hoped, I take a hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he expiate 
right? That he expiate a sanata lati kabalahu the year that comes before it, meaning that the reward for fasting on the month of on the day of Ashura is a person get their previous sins forgiven for the year before it. Okay, alhamdulillah. And this hadith already is collected by Muslim in the in his in the book of Siyam, the book of fasting. Okay, tayyib. So we see from this hadith that it is confirmed that akidu min min shahri that it is confirmed that from the rest of the days from the of that of the month then the prophet ﷺ mentioned thumma yalihi tasir li qawlihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the prophet sallallahu says in another hadith that's collected by muslim he says that if i were to remain or if i was to live um you know if i were to live or were to be alive then meaning the next year if i was to live to the next year i will fast the ninth along with the tenth so even though the prophet Muhammad confirmed that we fast yom ashura the tenth of yom ashura which corresponds hopefully to the eighth of august which corresponds to the tenth of al muharram by the way if you're following along the Prophet ﷺ said if he would have lived to the next year, he would have fasted also the ninth along with the tenth. So that makes it two days in total. Okay? He would have fasted the ninth along with the tenth and not just the tenth by itself. Alright? Ashura, <clears throat> meaning along with the tenth. So the Shaykh says a question might be asked, it might be asked, is it dislike? Is it makru that a person only fasts on the tenth day? Alright? Call about the ulama. He says some of the, the people of knowledge in the Yakra. They say that rally it is makru due to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu This hadith is collected by Ahmed in his Musnad that the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu where he says fast a day before it and a day after it to be in opposition to that of the Jews. Fast a day before it and a day after it to be in opposition to the Jews. So a rule of thumb so that the Muslims should know. And there are many narrations on it. As the Prophet said, Men tashabbaha qawmin bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Whoever imitates the people, then he's of them. It's a principle amongst the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah is that we defer and distinguish ourselves from the people of the book in every way. And when you go throughout the biography of the Prophet you see that that's what he strove to do. He always set himself out to be different from the people of the book. This is a principle that somehow it get muffled with the culture that we live in. All right. Because we muffle everything. The Internet had made the world so small. And we always argue that, well, this is my culture and this is where I'm from. This is where I've been raised, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it still does not give you the excuse not to go outside of your way to be different from the people who call on other than beside Allah. You have to understand what that means. Okay, you want to be like, you want to imitate, you want to emulate people who literally call on others besides Allah. They call on things which Allah has created. They call on certain things. So you're asking yourself, you have to really rhetorically ask yourself, this is who you want to emulate? This is who you want to imitate? And so if you understand that, then you will put distance between yourself and them. Not the fact that it's obligatory for you to do so, but just really understand the reason behind it. Okay, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all right, so the, he mentioned, we'll call about the ulama. Some of the people of knowledge, they say, however, no. Even though we have this hadith here, all right, that it is not makru, it is not dislike that a person only single out the tenth of al-Muharram to fast. It's okay, right? Some of the scholars, why? وَلَكِنْ يَفُوتُ بِفْرَادِهِ أَفْجُرَ مُخَالَفَةِ يَحُودِ However, However, though, they do say the person loses out on the reward of being in opposition to the Yahud. Because remember, the Yahud, they fast on this day. Not for the same reason, but they fast on this particular day. All right? The Yahud, they fast on this day. So to be different than them, you don't fast just one day. You will fast. That's why the Prophet Muhammad said, if, ne if I live to be next year, I will fast the ninth along with it as to separate and distinguish myself from that of the Yahud. All right. And sometimes some people have in their minds, they think that you are following them. And this is in many cases, as you've seen with the Qibla, when the Prophet Sallallahu used to face the Qibla that was in Quds, which is known as Jerusalem. Allah Jalla wa Ala sent down the verse that we should what? Said, we should uh, turn 
um, you're faced to a direction to a qibla taradaha, a qibla that you are pleased with. And that was the qibla which is in Mecca, all right? But before the Muslims, they used to pray towards direction of Quds, of Jerusalem. And the Yahud, they thought that the Muslim was imitating them, that the Muslims were following them. Do you understand? So sometimes when they see something like that, they be thinking, like, look at the Muslims following us, right? But that's not the case. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to be different from them. He says, uh, The scholars, they say that if the person does not fast the ninth along with the tenth, he loses out on the reward of differing and being in opposition to that of the people of the Yahud. Shaykh Rathamin, he says, the correct opinion with him, okay, the correct opinion with him in this matter is that it is not makru or dislike if a person single out only the tenth of Al Muharram to fast and he does not fast on the ninth nor the eleventh, okay. He says, for in Qa'il, if someone might ask you, what is the purpose, what is the reason that we fast or recommend it to fast when Ashura, okay? And that it being from one of the days of Al-Muharram. The answer is, the reason regarding that is that it is a day which Allah have, which we're in, Allah Jalla wa'ala have saved Musa and his people. All right, Bani Israel. And he had also destroyed Fir'aun and his people. When Allah drowned them, okay? As it has been confirmed and established in an authentic hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. And in this hadith, it is a, a, um, a evidence or indication that the tawqeed can of the Masabika bin Ahilla wa laysa bin Shuhuru F. Ranjiyah. لأن رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أكبر بأن يوم آشر من محرم هو يوم الذي أهلك الله فيه فرعون وقومه نجا موسى قومه right so it confirms that within this is that what that the توقيت with the time the way that people used to tell time with the earlier generations was by way of the crescent moons by way of the moons by أهلا and it was not by uh, <laughs> the Shuhuru and Ranjiya. It was not by that. All right. It was by the actual, um, the moons. This is how they would tell time. And this confirms that. Because the Messenger of Allah informs that the Yawm Ashir from the Muharram, it is the day in which Allah has destroyed their inferior own and his people. And he has saved Musa and his people. Now, the benefits of fasting on this particular day, <clears throat> Shaykh Uthameen mentions, not only is it recommended, so which let us know the hukam, the ruling pertaining to it, is that it's recommended. It's not obligatory. Okay? It is mustahab. It is not obligatory. That means in layman's terms, so that you can understand this, you cannot turn your nose up, look down at anyone, or censor anyone, or feel any type of way if your brother and sister is not fasting on this particular day. That's what that means. Okay? It is mustahab. Yes, it has a definition Islamically And I'm not saying that's what the definition is I'm giving you the understanding The definition of it is yes If a person is encouraged to do it And if he does the act He gets rewarded from Allah Jalla wa ala, And if he, does, and he doesn't do the act He is not deserving of a punishment from Allah Okay, that's the definition of the uh, of that That's the ta'rif But so in layman's terms So that we can understand You do not have to look at somebody Some type of way Twisted faces Because they're not fasting on the day of Ashura It's mustahab Aki. Come on take a break It's not obligatory Yes it's highly recommended Yes alhamdulillah Depend on where people at with their iman Depend on where people at with their ilm Depend where people at with their knowledge Depend on where people at in their mood And their understanding Do you understand their faham Then they will be encouraged by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To fast that day But if they're not then it might be from for whatever reasons they don't fast but it's still okay because it is not an obligatory fast like Ramadan okay <clears throat> so, so Shikha Demi says one of the benefits is that it is recommended to fast on the day of Ashura when I call if you watch it and he says that we speak in regards to the angle of it being recommended or that it is sought to be recommended is what we have mentioned regarding fasting on the day of Arafah that it expiates a person's previous the previous year 
Expiate your sins from the previous year. That's a strong recommendation. That's a strong <laughs> recommendation, right? So why would you fast when Yom Ha'ash showed up? Right? It's multiple reasons, right? As we're going to get to the hikmah behind it. But a strong recommendation is that you get your sins, your minor sins, that is, expiated from the previous year. Tayyip, you got that. Okay. Now, what takfiru sayyatu thawab? Okay, and expiating of your minor sins is a reward in and of itself. So that's a strong encouragement to fast. So if someone might ask, what is the wisdom on fasting on this particular day? Then the answer is the hikmah of that, as we said just a minute ago, is that it is the day of Ashura whereby Allah have saved there in Musa and his people, and he have drowned for their own and his people. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, he had found the people fasting on the day of Ashura out of the month of Al Muharram. And they said, They said that the reason why they were fasting is because this is the very same day wherein Allah Jalla have saved Musa and his people and he have drowned Pharaoh and his people. Right? So we fast this particular day out of gratefulness, out of appreciation. Tayyip. <coughs> So the Prophet وسلم, he responded and he says, Nahnu awla bi Musa minkum. And this is how we're supposed to be over every prophet and messenger. This is how we're supposed to be over the Book of Allah. This is how we're supposed to be over the Sunnah. This is called Gira. Not the type of jealousy that you even exposed to. Not the same thing as Hasid. Alright? This is Gira. Okay? Look what the Prophet وسلم said. He says, Nahnu awla bi Musa minkum we have more right we are more deserving to yani we are more deserving to musa alayhi salam than you are you're not going to honor musa more than we can honor him do you understand you don't have more rights or claim to musa than we do look at the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam look what he's saying look at this gira something that we should have all right we should have that this is why we behave a certain way when it comes to the book of Allah. When it comes to certain things, we should have this type of gear. All right. <clears throat> so the Prophet ﷺ said, "Fasamahu wa amarunasu bisliyamihi." Also, he led by example. It said he fasted, and then he ordered the people to fast as well. He fasted, and then he ordered the people to fast as well. Meaning, he ordered the Muslims, because remember, the non-Muslims, the Yahud, they were fasting during this day, and it was mentioned to them why they fast that day. But then the Prophet ﷺ fasted and he mentioned it to the Muslims that they should also fast this particular day. This hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari. He says that many of the people of knowledge which of the opinion that fasting on this particular day that it was obligatory then it was abrogated with the fast of Ramadan so the question here is opposed do a person try to acquire I mean tahsalu do you try to acquire to differ to be different from the Yahud and his fast only once or was this all year round we say kullu am siyamu ashura that the Prophet and even the Muslim is recommended to differ from them and to be different from them. Yani, this is all year. For example, fasting the day of Ashura, it is a must that what? One should fast the day before it or the day after it. The day before it or the day after it. And what did we say in the beginning of this talk? You can fast the 10th, I mean, you can fast the 9th. Along with the 10th, or you can fast the 10th and then the 11th after it, okay? So either way, and when we said, okay, so the month of Al-Muharram is this month, okay? And tomorrow is the 7th, which is the 9th of Al-Muharram. The 8th is the 10th of Al-Muharram. And the 11th is uh, um, the 8th, yeah, the 11th is the 9th of Al-Muharram, okay? In August, okay? So we get that. Tayyip, he says here... Um, وَلَوْ قَالَ قَائِ الْحَدِيثَانِ فِي صَحِيْ مُسْلِمْ فِي صِيَامِ عَاشُورَ حَدِيثُ عَيْشَ كَانَ قَرِيشَ تَصُمُ عَاشُورَ So if someone might say that we have two hadiths that is reported in the Muslim, in the Sahih of Muslim. The two hadith that we have regarding the fasting on the day of Ashura is the hadith of our mother, Aisha, where she said that the people of Quraysh, they used to fast on Ashura. 
the people of the Quraysh they used to fast from this day. Abadu hadith, and then afterwards the hadith. Muslim brings the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas and Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When the Prophet came to Medina, he found the Jews fasting that particular day. So the Prophet asked concerning this. The Prophet asked concerning this day. He says, So someone might ask, the the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is from the people of the Quraysh. He's from the tribe of Quraysh. So why wouldn't? How do he? How is it possible that he didn't know that they fast? They fasted during this day. But Jawabu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam arada an yandura ma huwa sabab fi kona ahla Medina wa yasumuna. The answer for this is that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to know. He wanted to investigate what was their reason for the people of Medina to fast during this particular day. Like in Lauki. However, if it is said, If it is said, it is the same reason that the Jews fast this day is the same as the reason why the Quraysh fast this day. The Sheikh said, we do not know. Meaning, do we know that the people of Quraysh, they fasted for the purpose of um, because Musa and his people were saved that day and Fir'aun and his people was destroyed? Or was it for a whole nother reason altogether? Another point I want to bring as another benefit that Sheikh Uthameen brings in regards to this particular um, fast or Naomi Ashura is that it is a ni'mah of Allah Jalla wa ala Muslimin fi Umma Sabika. He a ni'matun ala jinsihim ila yom al qiyamah. And this is important to understand. How does blessings work? How does nitma work? All right, we have to recognize these favors, especially if you are a believer. Right, it is a nitma from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala upon the Muslims. Okay, because regarding the previous nations, it is a nitma ala jinsihim ila yom kiyama, meaning into the day that kiyama is established, that the Muslims are aided. In regards to the previous nations, which is from a ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have conferred upon them. When we had the Psalm of Nabi Sallallahu had the Yawm al-Shukra. For this reason, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi fast this day out of thankfulness to Allah. Ala ma'an amma bihi ala Musa wa qawmihi. And upon the favor which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred upon Musa and his people. Haythu anjahum min al Whereas Allah Jalla wa ala has saved them from the drowning. And he have he have granted them victory and helped them uh, against Fir'aun and he has drowned him and his people. This is good. The Muslim, specifically and especially the believer, must always recognize the favors of Allah. Do you understand? You can't count them. As Allah says, If you were try to enumerate the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to number them. We know that. But it is a must that you recognize Allah's favor. Islam is a ni'mah. Don't forget it. Islam itself is a ni'mah. Alright? It's a blessing and a favor from Allah. Hidayah. I mean in sunnah. Sunnah is a ni'mah. Being guided to the sunnah is a ni'mah from Allah Jalla wa ala. Hidayah in and of itself, guidance, which is of two categories, is a ni'mah. Do you understand? Being Muslim is a ni'mah. Having iman is a ni'mah. Having health, a sound mind, and a pure heart. Do you understand? A sound mind and a pure heart is a ni'mah. Do you understand this? This is important for you to recognize the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred upon you. Because I'm going to tell you of beautiful coping mechanisms that you can understand. One of those coping mechanisms is whenever you're feeling down, whenever you're going through it, whenever you're in a rut, you're in a bad mood, whenever things don't feel too good for you. You know how it is. We all wake up on those days, right? Immediately recognize the ni'mah. Recognize the favors and the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred upon you and watch your mood begin to change trust me if you truly recognize and ponder on the nitma that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you your mood will begin to change so it's a nitma that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what allowing us and granting us victory to be able to benefit by fasting on your Ashura. and if you don't fast Let's just say you don't. 
Say you don't fast the 9th, which is tomorrow. Say you don't fast the 10th. Say you don't fast the 10th or the 11th. Say you don't fast at all, right? It is not a sin on you if you don't. You lose out on the rewards that is associated with that day, right? But still and none the least, you will not incur any blame or censor from Allah who Jalla wa'ala. All right, and that in itself is another ni'mah. Why is that another ni'mah? You might say, well, brother, it seems as if you are encouraging people not to fast this day. No, I am, in telling, I am in telling the people that what? The hukum, the ruling pertaining to this day, so that you can be in the middle course. And the middle course is defined by Allah and this messenger, not by a scholar, not by this particular group, not by this person here, not by your opinion or your emotions. The middle course is not defined by you. It's defined by Allah and this messenger. And if Allah and this messenger not make it obligatory for you to fast during this day, then you cannot come alone and say that you have to fast during this day or make someone feel some type of way if they don't fast during this day. Be balanced. Why stream that you're upon this, upon that, but you don't want to be balanced? Be balanced. All right? Yes, it's recommended. And again, that's going to be based on a lot of different things. Why a person may do it. Do you understand? We have to really be more gentle when it comes to learning and implementing this da'wah. We have to be real gentle in our approach and real gentle in how we understand it and real gentle in how we apply it and real gentle how we deal with one another because just because you learned something today or you learned something yesterday or a year ago or you you, you understand and you have been implemented a certain way it doesn't give you the right to lord that over others recognize Allah's favor recognize Allah's favor if you are from those who are going to fast tomorrow and on the 10th then that's a nitma because Allah has guided you to get that reward. Do you understand? And if you're from those who don't, then it's still a nitma because Allah has given you a concession and He did not make it obligatory. That still was a nitma because if it was obligatory, you would have been a sin upon you if you would have missed it. Tayyip, so that's what we wanted to bring today. Anything that we said in wrong or in our translation of Shikr means words or even our hadith or the Quran, if we want to any ayats, it's from ourselves in the shaitan. Where we said it's correct, it's from Allah, Jalla wa ala, subhanakallahu, wa hamdi, ashadu, wa anta, astakutu, wa rikh, jazakallah, khayim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.